Good morning, fam. Happy Sunday. Welcome back to Erica's EDC. And today we are going to do a pocket dump and then talk a little bit about some life updates. I posted a photo the other day asking what you guys wanted to hear on the next video. And honestly, the answers were pretty much all over the place. But one of the most recommended things that I've had requested to me was an update on like the the camper situation and stuff like that so we're gonna do that we're going to address that in the second half of the video in case you don't give a shit about that which i understand uh and we'll get into the pocket dump first because that's the fun part okay so it is a beautiful sunday it is very chilly here in new hampshire it is like 46 degrees and windy we're getting into fall weather. So, um, in my front left pocket of my Levi's, we have a pocket crucifix. This is from my friend Jack over at Catholic EDC on Instagram. He has another page going, I believe, that is called the Pocket Crucifix Project. He basically puts these little crucifix things together and gives them out for free to anybody who wants them and they're just i think they're 3d printed but um there's some type of like plastic it's very rugged and durable though and he gives them out for free if you ask so i always carry this in my left pocket with the the terrible chapstick the most boring thing the most boring part of an edc but it is so necessary so that's in the left pocket. My phone also goes in there, but we are recording on that. And then in my front right pocket, that's where all the fun stuff is. So let me just put this stuff in here. I have this Three Sons leather slip that I've been testing this month. The owner's name is Seth, and he is a firefighter. I have talked to him personally. He's very nice. And he makes a whole bunch of different leather products here in the USA. This is a slip that he makes that basically holds a larger style flashlight and some type of pry bar. I figure you could put maybe a pen in here, um, maybe a very slim knife, like a tactile um, rock wall or something like that. That maybe would fit in here, but this is what I carry in mine. Mine does not have the pocket on the back. He does make a version that has a pocket on the back here that you could put a knife into or maybe some cash or something, but I have my Streamlight Macro Stream in this side, and yes, it is a very tight fit. It's almost as tight as your mom, but it, whoo, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, there's my Streamlight Macro Stream, so that fits in there. I tried putting my new uh, Phoenix PD25R in here, and it just wasn't fitting. Like, I tried to stretch that leather out, and it was just saying, hell fucking no. So, I think the largest diameter flashlight that I can fit into this slip for me is the Streamlight Macro Stream. And like I said, that it's a tight fit, man. But, at least it's secure, right? And it's molded really nice in there. So there's that, and then I also have my Nice Guy Machine Company Plain Jane Bar in the other side. That fits really well in there. Honestly, with all of the photos that I've seen on Instagram, I would say 95% of people that are utilizing these slips are putting some type of Nice Guy Machine Company pry bar in this side. Like, I think that's what people buy these for, is to carry these. So this fits perfectly down in there fabulous really like that um this is very minimalistic i really enjoy it because this pry bar is pretty sharp and pointy so when you don't have it in a slip it can be a little like awkward in the pocket and kind of sharp if you move certain ways i believe there's another company called bad stitch goods something along the lines of that that makes a slip that just carries the pry bar like it's literally a pry bar slip made for this pry bar if you don't need something that carries the flashlight so you could look into that if you wanted but i really like this duo here it's very nice so that's in the right front pocket also in that pocket i have this today this is a slip from lynch leather this was gifted to me by the owner to test out. It's ghost leather. The kids drew all over it. 
and that is slowly wearing off, but it looks pretty trashed. That is not a normal patina, that is children writing all over it. Um, I do have an Urban Carver's bead on there. I forget which model this is, but it's a brass bead, really nice. And then inside of here, today we have this little honey. So this is a GEC, don't fucking know the number. Um, I'm horrible with these GEC knives. I don't, people refer to them by like a model number and I can't for the life of me remember. The worst part is I know it's stamped on here. There's a number right there and part of this long number is the model number. I just don't know what part. Maybe the first part is 72. Is this a 72? I don't know. I just work here. But this is in the pocket today, really nice. It has a an edge that I put on it. It does have some patina on it though because I've been using it like crazy so that you can probably see a few spots right there, some little patina spots. But um, this is not the edge that it came with. Obviously, I reprofiled this and put a mirror finish on it. Really nice knife. The blade play in all directions is a little annoying. It moves side to side and up and down. It's never given out on me, but it's just like, it just wiggles around in there, which is kind of weird. But I really like this knife. I love the design. It's very old school. I love that it locks. Lanyard hole is really cool. We have another Urban Carver's bead on there. This is a little hammered finish one. Just really, really like this knife. It fills the hand very well. This is definitely like a main carry. This doesn't have to be a backup knife. Really reminiscent of the case back pocket. Um, love, love, love this knife. Jesse got this for me. You know, Jesse just gets everything at this point for me. Um, he got me this slip. He got me the hat that I'm wearing, the sweatshirt that I'm wearing, this knife. And I think that's it for today. But a lot of things are from Jesse. So, Jesse, thank you. I love you. You're perfect for me. Um, so, yeah, that's the main blade for today, if I can get it to close. Really, really like this. This is a large slip. Uh, it does carry the extra small Knipex pliers. If you were wondering, you can put those little tiny pocket pliers into here and they do fit. Just a heads up. Um, also, I forgot this from my front left pocket, my pen, my tactile turn pen. This is the Slim Mini Bolt Action. Really nice pen. My favorite. Just fantastic. Okay, so back to the right front pocket. I also am carrying this. This is a slip from Michael Richter. This is raw leather that he put out in the sun and baked for me a little bit. And then inside we have the Josh Francis from Knife Guy Mods. Blue Jane, of course, because we are testing this this month. Really, really nice. Still absolutely loving it. Loving the patina that is forming on this blue jean denim micarta. I carried this without a slip for one day in my waxed pants. And the wax from my pants like melted onto these scales. And now they're very dark and kind of like matte finished. And I just think this looks so cool. They almost actually look gray. I'm wondering if the wax was sticky and then it made dirt like stick to the scales and it worked its way into the fabric and now it just looks like this because this was a way brighter blue when it first got here. But Josh Francis does these really incredible mods. Um, I will link him down in the description below. He does fantastic work at great prices. This is a knife that I'm testing this month. I'll be carrying it for the whole month just to test the durability of this build like we did last month with the Slater model that he does. This one has white liners and the brass liners to sort of replicate a pair of blue jeans. I really, really like this. So if you enjoy the aesthetics of this model, contact Josh. And tell him that you want a Blue Jane. You can also contact him and have him purchase a knife from you. And then he can build on it. Like you don't have to already have a case Sodbuster Jr. and send it to him. He will buy them for you in whatever steel you want. And then build off of that. Just a heads up. Okay. So you don't have to already have one and send it in. That's what I did with this. He bought this carbon steel Sodbuster Jr. from Smoky Mountain Knife Works and then built it into a Blue Jane for me. 
And of course, like I said, it's riding in the Richter Knives Slip in raw leather. Michael Richter makes the world's best leather slips. He is the world's best leather worker, and we want him doing a full time by the end of the year. So fill up his books, contact him on Instagram and his DMs, and put in an order because we want him to be doing this full time. Remember, we don't want him at Wally World anymore. We want him doing this. So contact him, please. Also, he can make slips that match your knives from Josh. We're all talking. We're trying to do some like collaboration type stuff. So if you want a blue Jane and you want a slip to match her. Oh, oh wait a minute. We can't, we can't assume the gender. You want it to match it, them. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> um, you can have Michael Richter make you a little a little slip that matches your Blue Jane. Just a heads up. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so sorry that joke like caught myself off guard. That was kind of funny though, right? <laughs> Don't misgender my knife. That's fucking funny. <laughs> anyway, um, back right pocket today is my fail safe goods wallet. This is the one and only wallet that I have carried for the past, I think, either year and a half or two years. I don't sit on this, though, so, like, if I'm sitting, it is not in my back pocket. It is very bad for your back to sit on something like this. So, if I'm sitting for an extended period of time, this goes in my front right pocket. But today, I have to walk a lot of dogs. Da-da-da. So, this is in the back pocket because I'm just standing. But this is the Sidewinder in Crazy Horse Leather from Ryan over at Failsafe Goods. I've been carrying this forever. It is very beautiful now. Look at this. Look at the patina, man. Really minimalistic wallet. Just has a front slot, middle slot, back slot. Nothing to it. Love it. Crazy horse leather. Really durable stuff. Really, really durable. Um, so that's the wallet. And then in my back left pocket, we have a hank, of course. I think this is the same one that I showed on my last pocket dump. I haven't changed it out. Issuing stitches. Really nice bandana. Um... That's everything that's in the pockets. Overkill, yes. But are we testing things? Also, yes. Now let's get into answering some questions about personal stuff, if you've made it this far. <laughs> um, so, as you guys know, I was living in a camper. I moved into it last November. I ended up losing my housing. It was a very interesting situation. That whole video is way back in the archives. There's a video explaining why Nicole and I lost our housing. I'm not going to get into that now, but unfortunately we ended up having to live in campers and for almost a year we were living in campers, uh, including throughout the entire winter here in New England. I didn't, I documented some of it. There are videos um, explaining how dangerous and how scary that was. I recorded some actual footage of damage that happened in the winter to the campers. Um, like the week of Christmas, my skylights like gave out and there was water in my camper. Um, like Nicole's heat stopped working in her camper in the middle of the winter. Now granted in New Hampshire, it gets very very cold dangerously cold like you cannot you can't just not have heat in the winter in new hampshire um you just can't it's you would die so very dangerous very scary um the campers were an eye-opening experience we made it through the winter however after winter you know came and went um i think the reality of being in survival mode all winter really hit me and I, for a while this spring, was at a point where I felt that if I didn't get out of the camper, I didn't want to necessarily be on this planet anymore, if you are catching what I'm throwing. Um, we're getting a little dark here for a second, but it's just the reality of things, right? Um, I really didn't think I could do it anymore. It's very hard living in a camper with four dogs when you have like no running water, barely any electricity, no internet. Um, no, like, bathroom, like, no running anything. Like, it's not like I could turn on a sink or flush a toilet or anything. Like, there was, it was a shell that I was living in. And the only thing that worked in my camper was the fridge and the heat. Um, but even the heat, you know, you blow through a 20, 
a gallon, I think it is, um, tank of propane like a day in the winter. And those were $22 to fill every time. So going through $22 of propane every single day is exhausting. And then you have to like bring them down to the hardware store and fill them up. And it's dangerous anyway. I don't know. The whole thing was just so ridiculous. And I didn't complain really while I was in the moment because I was just in survival mode. Um, and I was grateful to just even have a shelter. But once, once spring hit and I wasn't in survival mode anymore as much it's like the reality of winter and it being so dangerous and devastating like it all just hit me at the same time come spring and mentally i was fucked up <laughs> that was a traumatic experience like so many things happened in the campers that were really not okay that i'm not going to get into right now but it was very difficult so it just all hit me at once and i was like man um i can't do this again next winter like I will not be okay so thank the lord um I voiced how I was feeling and Nikki bless her heart being the perfect saint that she is um gave me a place to stay at her house because she has a massive house and above their garage they have to me, I would consider it a studio apartment because, I mean, I was just living in a camper for almost a year. Um, a very large space above their garage that was just unused. And they were calling it like a game room and it had a pool table and stuff. And it has like an in-home gym in it too. Like a massive room that has like heat and AC and electricity and shit. Um, and their house is so large that she was like, yeah, you can come stay above the garage for now like there's nobody even using it it has its own entrance and exit uh why don't you stay there so i took the dogs and moved in there because i did not feel mentally good enough to continue living in the camper and i couldn't anyway it was just dangerous um so yeah i've been living above nikki's garage for a couple of months now i'm sure that you have noticed the change in scenery when i'm filming sometimes i film in her backyard a lot and I've done a few videos up in my room. So that's where I'm currently living. I'm staying there for the foreseeable future. Uh, I just sold the camper like a couple days ago with Nicole's help. We sold it to somebody else who is also homeless and needed a place to stay in the winter. Um, I'm hoping that whoever that is has hookups to water and stuff. Um, because when you don't have it, that is very difficult. But I hope that he can bring it somewhere where you can hook it up to water, maybe electricity. Uh, because otherwise, whew, that's a rough winter, man. But he bought it, so it's gone. Um, had to sell it for way less than I bought it for. Took a massive hit on that. But it, what are you going to do? It's gone. Um, and Nicole is also moving out of her camper. She's moving in with her boyfriend, who is absolutely wonderful. They're moving into an apartment together, and she will be selling her camper next. So we're out of the campers because we just couldn't do it anymore. And Nicole genuinely couldn't. Nicole didn't have any heat in her camper. Like, her her heat her heating system just didn't work. Like, it just stopped working in the middle of winter. So we had to use, like, a little space heater thing. Very dangerous. And then you know, when the power went out for two and a half days last winter, which I filmed, she had to move into my camper and we had to use our body warmth to stay warm because we had no electricity at all. The power went out for two and a half days. And, uh, yeah. So we had to like split up my camper. We had six dogs in a tiny camper <laughs> that didn't get along by the way. So you have to keep the door closed. And then we had to use body warmth to keep each other warm really not appropriate so i'm glad that we're both getting out of the campers nicole has a beautiful little apartment with her boyfriend and their dogs and she's starting a new job i will get her on a video here soon i know you guys have been begging to see her yes we still hang out all the time life has just been super busy and like i said you know we both just moved she's starting a brand new job um i've been very busy in my personal life so i'll get her on a video soon but we're still you know, we're closer than ever, if anything. And um, I will I will get her integrated into some content soon. But yeah, uh, just a lot of changes, guys. I'm glad that I'm somewhere more stable in terms of housing now because that was really a disturbing experience, to be honest. I learned a lot. I learned how to be very strong. But um, 
it's crazy like what we're capable of doing when you have no choice but to be strong i mean it's crazy what our brains are capable of figuring out and doing when you're in survival mode but the repercussions after and the consequences after mentally and emotionally you got to be prepared for those because i did not expect for that all to hit me once i was safe and i'll be honest like now we're getting really detailed here um when i moved into nikki's and i was able to shower flush a toilet wash my hands have heat and ac for the first time i like had to relearn how to like not be human but there were times where i would go to wash my hands and, like, I would start tearing up because I was so grateful that I had water to turn on and wash my hands. Like, it was really hard not having those everyday essentials for so long, and especially in the winter. Like, we didn't we didn't have the capability of setting up, like, solar panels or anything. Like I said, we, we had no electricity other than being able to, like, turn on the lights and then keep, like, a fridge running. Like, n nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Had to travel to take a shower. Had to travel to do laundry had to travel to use the bathroom. So once I got into a house that had normal things like running water and a flushing toilet and a shower and being able to do laundry and being able to stay warm, um, I was very emotional for the first couple of weeks because it was just like I had to relearn how to be a person again and be treated like I'm a living human being. <laughs> it was really weird. So still kind of healing from that, especially because it wasn't, you know, my choice to be homeless um at all it was a very warped situation that still has not found resolution really um which is pretty crazy but yeah i'm slowly healing i'm getting there life is much better now um i'm i'm happy now just trying to kind of heal from everything i guess <laughs> uh and yeah, like even my body wasn't doing well in the camper because the camper had like so much black mold and like rot and stuff. And yes, we did make the new buyer very aware of those um, issues. It, it was a guy that bought it. He seems like he's handy. Um, we were we made it very clear that like the camper needed some remodeling and some rework before you could like live in it comfortably. The, the mold was so bad that I got, like, pretty sick in there, and so did the dogs. Still healing from that. I'm sure you guys have noticed in some of my recent videos, like, my face has been blown up sometimes. And, like, I'll have these dark circles under my eyes, and I'll just look sick. I keep getting these, like, flare-ups from certain things that happen in the camper, and I'm trying to kind of, like, internally heal myself. <laughs> so sometimes my face is like super swollen I got like a really bad breakout all over again just everything was yucky and I got really sick there but we're healing we're doing better uh yeah really random but you can see my black eye is pretty much gone I put van man beef tallow balm on it and that healed it like literally overnight I'm not kidding there's this company called the van man company and i bought this stuff it's a little jar a little glass jar of grass-fed beef tallow honey olive oil and beeswax and i put it on my black eye and i'm literally not kidding like overnight it basically healed it i still have one little spot there and you can see it's still a little bit swollen but look at how much better this looks compared to the other day crazy beef tallow on your skin weirdest thing ever but it works absolutely crazy so we're healing we're getting better guys we're getting back on track here i want to thank you guys again for all of the prayers the good wishes um the kind words the support i tried to make continuous content throughout this entire thing even when i was not feeling very good even when i was physically mentally emotionally sick even when the roof of my camper was caving in in the middle of winter um tried to make continuous content for you guys and we've finally made it through to the other side and i just want to thank you guys so so much for being so supportive when i was like 
scraping content together for you guys. <laughs> I really appreciate all of you. We genuinely are a big family of people that no matter where you are in the world, what your beliefs are, whether I see your mom on Wednesday nights or not, whether you use Chinese knives that I'm allergic to or not, we still all love each other. We're still all he here for each other. We love knives. We love gear. And I think that's one of the coolest aspects of this community is that no matter what our differences are, we can just come together, erase it all, and just enjoy content about knives and gear and fun stuff. So um, that's what I have for you guys today. If you've made it this far into the rant, I love you so much. Thank you again for everything. I will see you guys on the next video. I need to use your shit real quick. Hold on. <clears throat> Go use your shit. Learn how to sharpen your knives. And I will see you on the next video. I love you so, so much. Take care.